Bongo! You know how in video games when you do something there's always a music cue? And you know when you're playing said video game, you know there's rarely any silence. Yeah, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about that. <laughs> Since the dawn of time, aka 1972, video games usually had music or sounds embedded within them, making them more entertaining than watching your mom stand in line at your local Costco and chat with the cashier. So the next time you waddle your way into EB Games and pick up the latest Calling Duty or Animal Cross, I want you to ask yourself, what in the H E double F word is going on inside my head when I'm playing video games? This is called a le motif, and it's everywhere, from music to TVs to even gosh darn video games. <clears throat> to quote the silly Merriam-Webster definition, an associated melodic phrase or figure that accompanies the reappearance of an idea, person, or situation, especially in Wagnerian music drama. Wait a minute, shut your poop ass breath mouth for a sec. Who in the ever-loving stink is Wagner? Let me tell you, this wrinkly ass geezer was a German composer, theater director, and conductor in the 19th century. He was mostly known for his operas and being anti-Semitic. But he invented the term leitmotiv, meaning leading motif in German. This crack ass man sent music on a collision course on how we can manipulate and perceive music, uh, especially in storytelling. I mean, have you noticed? I mean, like, like at all. Like seriously? Have you not like noticed it at all? Okay, you know Superman's theme, right? Yeah, doy firewall! Everybody knows Superman's theme. Why? It's a leitmotif. I want that H E double hockey sticks is a leitmotif. Listen, uh, when you hear a theme, you automatically know it's Superman, right? How? Uh. And also how the theme sounds. It's super heroic like, and it fills you with. A sense of justice, power, American prejudice. <laughs> but that's not it. You can not only associate it with a person, but you can associate it with an emotion or a group of people. Like, take the Avengers. Each of them have their own separate themes and styles, but when they band together, it's like this <laughs> They have one collective theme that represents them as a whole. Now, isn't that wacky as balls? You know what else is wacky as balls? It also works with corporate propaganda. You bet your stink ass little fart poop has been brainwashed by lay motifs to this day. I bet you can even recite one on the spot right now. I'm going to call the police on you, you pure mutant, you troglodyte. <laughs> Apart from that, there are some really cool examples of lay motifs in the media, and TV shows, and video games. But. I'm gonna mostly talk about video games here. An amazing example of leitmotifs in video games is Undertale. Now, I know how cringe the fan base is and just how, you know, weird the game is, but I don't care. It holds a very special place in my heart. Okay, to catch up to speed, Undertale is a role-playing game created by indie developer Toby Fox. It's where you control a child who has fallen into the underground. It's a large, like, secluded area that's been sealed off by a magic barrier. Uh, the player meets various monsters uh, during its journey back to the surface. But what's really cool is that the choices you make as the player influence how the game ends. You can do a pure pacifist run where you spare every encounter you meet, or you can go monkey mode, and you can do the genocide run where you can go absolutely just decimate the entire population. And whichever route you choose, the music is always super adamant throughout the whole story. The game has over 20 leitmotifs, like their own like- <laughs> Now what in the piss balls does that mean, I hear you asking? Well, it matters because 
all those little melodies give so much power to the storytelling aspect of the game. I mean, just listen to this. Now you understand what goes on in my head when I listen to the soundtrack of both of these games. And now you know quite a few about Les Motifs in general. But I don't think that Les Motifs only belong in video games. It's also a big thing in concept albums. <laughs> but that's a whole other kind of worms, and I'll leave that up to you to discover. If you know me in real life, then you know that I seriously love Pink Floyd. And... I would talk about it in this video, but it's oh, it's a long, it's a long topic. It's very just very big. I'll leave it all up to you to do your own research. It's a fascinating topic, and Pink Floyd does it especially well in their studio album The Wall. Give it a listen if you're so inclined, or if you have an hour and a half to kill. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little more in depth about the whole mind thing, but it's super boring, and I don't. It's not the main topic of this video, so I'm just gonna. Get it over quick. Memories aren't stored in just one part of the brain. Different types are stored across different interconnected brain regions. For explicit memories, which are about events that happened to you, episodic, as well as general facts and information, semantic. There are multiple important parts of the brain, but the most in this case is the amygdala. The amygdala is an almond-shaped structure in the brain's temporal lobes attached emotional significance to memories. This is particularly important because strong emotional memories, example those associated with shame, joy, love, or grief, are difficult to forget. This includes musical memories such as lay motifs. If the melody impacts you deep enough, you'll most likely have it ingrained inside your head. There. Now will you leave me alone? God. So as you can very obviously tell, I'm a big fan of lay motifs. But how does this tie in with me personally? Uh, well, when I was a little stinker on my big-ass Samsung Galaxy Tab 4, I discovered this game. You already know the name. And I was watching some Let's Plays on it on YouTube, you know, how children do nowadays. And as I was watching, I got more and more, like, sucked into the community of the whole game. Even though I wasn't super into the fandom, I was still partaking in the community stuff that was going on. Mostly in comics. What I would do with these comics is that I would use a screen recorder on my tablet and start recording and dub my own voice over the comic. So it was like a visual novel sort of deal. These were called comic dubs. <laughs> I posted a video that had a sort of risque title and thumbnail and somehow I amassed half a million views on that video. I think I got 50 bucks from that, actually. <laughs> Those choices I made as a kid kind of reflected on how I am doing right now. <laughs> I mean, I love doing voice acting and just voice work in general. And I'll jump at any opportunity if a friend needs something to do, like, oh, can you do a monster voice? And I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, it's quick stuff like that. But also the video and music aspect of it all as well has just brought it's done a collision course on me you know because i love making the video part i love doing the voice work but also i'm in love with the music and the music that's where i'm like mm, big big bar you're, 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 you know and i might want to do that as a career path either voice work acting making videos and just doing stupid stuff all day or music. I mean, it's all hard and it's all kind of unrealistic than like an actual job job, you know, but like, gotta make that money somehow. I want your takeaway from this whole video thing is just to find leitmotifs in your own world. Whenever you're listening to an album or if you're watching a movie, if you're watching TV shows, try to like, tune in and actually listen to the music and if you hear you know repeated melodies just in a song or in a you know a theme or whatever then there's probably a chance it's a lay motif anyway um i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys later adios